kids podcast. <laughs> you can go slow. A kids podcast about. Hello, my name is Ari, and I help produce this show you're listening to. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for being here with us. It means so much that you're choosing to spend your time listening to this show and hearing what we've made for you. We truly couldn't do this without you. So I hope you enjoy this episode. What is racism? Racism is judging someone by the color of their skin or how they look. To me, racism is when someone is rude to a person with different color skin. It's kind of like bullying, but worse. Racism is a way of looking down on someone, of treating them as less than, of thinking poorly about them, or excluding them because of the color of their skin. And one more thing, this usually and almost always happens to people of color or people with black and brown skin. Welcome to A Kid's Book About, the podcast. I'm Matthew, your host. The voices you heard at the top of our show were from Alejandro, Jonah, and Jelani. Each week, we talk about the big things going on in your world with a different author from our A Kid's Book About series. Hi, I'm Jelani Memory. I'm a dad, I'm an author, and I'm an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who starts a new business, which can be a pretty risky thing, both personally and financially. And I'm the father of six kids. Jelani is the founder of A Kid's Book About. He wrote the first book in the series. I wrote a kid's book about racism for my own kids. So I have six kids. We are a blended family, which means I have four white kids and two black and brown kids. Um, and and I'm my skin color is chocolatey brown. Um, so I'm a person of color. And I wanted to make sure my kids all the way from zero to 15 at the time would feel comfortable talking about racism. And little did I know is that the only ones in the equation between me and my kids who were uncomfortable talking about racism was me. Have you ever brought up racism with your friends or with the grown-ups in your life? How did it go? Talking about racism doesn't have to be hard, and finding the right words to talk about racism is something we all can work on every day. But first, we need to be able to name racism when we see it. I asked Jelani about his experience with racism. I've experienced racism a lot throughout my life. The thing about racism is it doesn't always seem like racism when it happens. It's not as obvious as somebody calling you a really ugly, bad name based on the color of your skin. Sometimes it's the way somebody looks at you or what somebody expects of you or doesn't expect of you, um, thinking maybe you can't do something because of your skin color. And so for me, I can think of moments as far back as when I was four and five and kids calling me names in class. And I can think of moments as as soon as yesterday, people in the workspace um, who say things that are hurtful, but they don't know are hurtful. And racism, again, it's it's tricky. It's tricky sometimes to know when it's happening, but you often know racism and when you experience it by how it makes you feel. When somebody does something or says something or shows you something or believes something that makes you feel as a person of color like you're not as good as them or you're not you're not like them. All right, I want to ask you something, kids, and I'm asking you knowing that it might make you feel a number of different emotions. Have you ever noticed racism happening in your world, maybe in your neighborhood or at your school or maybe even with a family member? Uh, Maybe it happened to you or to someone you know and care about. How do you think it feels to hear someone say something racist about you or your family or where you go to school or where you live? Sit with the emotions that come up. Give them space to just 
be. This is a safe place, and feeling these emotions may help you to better understand them. How does racism make you feel? Sad and angry. It makes me feel sad because people could, should be treated the same way. The fact that racism exists makes me feel sad. It's a really ugly and terrible truth, especially in our American society. And yet, for black and brown individuals, it's like the water we swim in. It's something that we experience often on a daily basis. And, and many of the things that we do, um, whether that's going to the grocery store or getting hired for a new job or joining a new classroom or meeting a new friend, it's so common and so prevalent that in some ways it's normal. And when I say racism is normal, what I mean is that it's frequent and it happens all the time. It's terrible, it's bad, it's no good, but it is a normal, everyday occurrence. We'll hear more from Jelani, including the answer to one of the questions you submitted right after this break. Hey there, listeners. Ari here. Have you been listening to an episode and heard kid voices just like yours, asking questions and telling us super cool facts? Maybe like this? What type of adventures are there? Do you know, to see at night as well as an owl, you will need eyes as big as grapefruits? Wow. What curious and thoughtful minds you all have. We'd love to hear from you and include you in the show. Just write to us with your grown-up at listen at a kid's podcast about.com and we'll tell you all about the awesome opportunities for you to share and get involved and thank you to lily and kai for contributing their voices and to you too i'm so excited to hear from you Friends, hello, my name is Ben Tartine, and I am the head camp counselor at Camp Adventure, a summer camp podcast. Camp Adventure is a first-of-its-kind summer camp that you can listen to anywhere, like in the car, under your blanket fort, while you're going for a walk, I mean, everywhere. And it's a podcast for everyone. I tell stories about growing up, exploring my backyard, building castles out of chocolate, all kinds of stuff. There's sing-alongs led by the fabulous Hannah Glaver. We host a weekly challenge that you and your friends, neighbors, and grown-ups can all do together. There are games and scavenger hunts and jokes, bird song calls, learning words in another language together, and just so much great stuff for every single kid out there. I think you're going to enjoy it. New episodes release every Saturday throughout the summer, and you can listen to them anytime, anywhere, and in any order. So go wild. Listen to Camp Adventure wherever podcasts are found. Adventure, we venture. Together with courage, we learn and grow strong. We learn from each other. So let's discover and uncover great adventure right in Welcome back to A Kid's Book About, the podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about racism, how to spot it, and how to talk about it. I wanted to make sure my kids would feel comfortable talking about racism. And little did I know is that the only ones in the equation between me and my kids who are uncomfortable talking about racism was me. It wasn't my kids. My kids were totally fine with it. And that's a remarkable, amazing thing about kids. They're ready. They're ready to talk about just about anything if only the adults in their life would have the courage to do it. So kudos to every kid out there listening. Kids are ready. That's our slogan here at A Kid's Book About, and it's one that's going to come up over and over again on this show. This amazing thing happened with my kids when I gave them the book that I wrote for them. They were freely talking about racism, which they were already ready to do. 
but they were also talking about other big, important, difficult topics to talk about um, with me that they hadn't talked about with me before. And I think it's because my book somehow gave them the permission to talk about it with me, mostly me sort of raising my hand and saying, it's okay to talk about hard stuff. And I think oftentimes kids just need that permission. And oftentimes for us grownups, we need that courage to raise our hand and say, it's okay for you to talk to me. I'm ready to. Mind if I make things awkward for a moment? I know you're probably listening to this episode with an adult. Maybe it's the grown-up that you live with or someone in charge of caring for and looking after you. Or maybe it's your teacher. I want you to look at them right now, right in the eyes even, because this next part's especially important for them to hear. Remember what Jelani said a moment ago about grown-ups needing that courage to say, it's okay for you to talk to me? These conversations aren't always easy to start, but they are always, always important. Jelani wrote a book called A Kid's Book About Racism, but he didn't stop there. A Kid's Book About has gone on to publish lots and lots of books about hard-to-bring-up topics. Starting a kid's book about was really fun and simple and organic. It was built around this idea of making these really incredible books that are anchored in the idea that kids are totally ready to to get in there and talk about all of the hard stuff, the sticky stuff, the uncomfortable stuff of life, and that it's the parents, it's the grown-ups, it's the aunties, it's the uncles, it's the teachers who need help starting those conversations. So kids actually have a leg up here. We made these books as a way for grown-ups to get up to where kids were, to start starting these conversations, to talk about these things, whether that's death or cancer or depression, or anxiety, or loneliness. I wanted to create these incredible books for more grownups to start these conversations with the kids in their lives. And now we've made almost 40 books on these really challenging, empowering, and important topics. And it's so rewarding to hear from kids all over the world, truly, about the impact that these books are making And to hear their stories, too, and the things that they're thinking about, talking about, and experiencing. A number of you wrote in with questions about racism. Today, we're hearing from Jonah in Maryland. Why do people treat people of color differently instead of white people? Because they are pretty much the same, but just with a different skin tone. Different skin tone doesn't mean you should bully someone or make them feel bad. That's a really important question and a tough question to answer because in some ways we aren't different from each other at all. And just having different skin color doesn't mean that somebody's good or bad or wrong or right. And so racism is a thing that just shouldn't happen. And yet it does. And there are long, complicated answers that go back into history and the realities of slavery in America or segregation, which is when black people were not allowed to live in the same neighborhoods as white people or go to the same shops or restaurants or drink from the same water fountains even. But I think the reality is, is that racism happens today Because some people believe, and many people believe, that black and brown people just simply aren't as good as people who aren't black and brown, white individuals. That they aren't as capable as white individuals. That they aren't as smart as white individuals. That what they can achieve isn't as big as what white individuals can. And very few people would say that outright. They wouldn't say that as specifically as that, and yet somewhere in the back of their mind sits very small little beliefs that guide a lot of their thinking and their actions. What do your actions say about what you believe? What do your actions lead others to believe about you? I want to end by giving you a question to think about. You might not know the answer for it right away, and that's okay. I'll ask Jelani too. When you're ready to share your answer, tell a grown-up you trust, and then ask them for their answer too. Ready? Here it goes. What can you do when you see racism happening in your neighborhood? 
at your school, or in your world. Jelani? When you see racism happening in your neighborhood, at your school, on your Zoom class, oftentimes it's hard to know what to do or what to say. And I'd love to tell you to stand up and fight for what's right and push back and say, that's not right or that's mean. And I think that's a really good thing to do. But sometimes it's not as obvious when racism is happening. And there's this moment where you feel unsure. You know that icky feeling that you feel when somebody said something that doesn't feel quite right, but you don't know what to do about it. And I often find myself in that situation where I go back and I reflect on that moment and I realize that that feeling was me experiencing racism. And so I think the really important thing to do is to be able to identify racism Maybe not in the moment, because you won't always be able to do that, but maybe later on and be able to mark it and call it what it is, to use that name, racism, and let that inform interactions and moments when you enter back into your class, when you talk with your friends again, when you go back to school, um, that help you identify those moments better. And then when you have the courage and the ability and the clarity to see racism for what it is, is then stand up and say something. And if that's standing up and saying something for yourself because you're experiencing it as a black or brown kid, or if it's standing up for somebody else, stepping in the way and saying, hey, that's not cool, that's not right to say, that's mean, or that's racist. Thank you to Jelani Memory, author of A Kid's Book About Racism, for joining us today, and to our two very special kid voices for helping make this episode what it is. My name is Alejandro. I'm nine years old. I live in Albany, Oregon. I play violin against my will, but I prefer playing Legos. My name is Jonah. I am 10 years old, and I live in Maryland. My favorite thing is playing Fortnite because I get to connect with my friends. Thanks, Alejandro. Thanks, Joda. If you want to be on a future episode of A Kid's Book About the podcast, or if you have a question you'd like us to answer, have a grown-up email us at listen at akidspodcastabout.com, and we'll send you the details. A Kid's Book About the podcast is recorded and produced by me, Matthew Winner, with help from Chad Michael Snavely and the team at Sound On Studios. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever podcasts are found. And if you like this episode, consider sharing it with a friend, teacher, or grown-up. Join us next week for a conversation about emotions with a kid's book about author Nikita Simpson. Hi, this is Matthew, and I'm head of podcasts at a kid's company about... We hope you enjoyed this show, and we'd love for you to check out our growing library of shows at A Kid's Podcast About. Whether you're looking for storytelling with crafts and activities, fact-finding with experts and enthusiasts, or looking to explore and understand your world better, we have got a podcast for you. Check out the A Kid's Podcast About channel on Apple Podcasts or wherever podcasts are found, or visit akidsco.com. (laughs) 